Welcome, guys, to another ep episode. I'm here with uh, one of my personal big brother, not the big brother, but yeah, and his lovely wife. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Munya Chizonga and Adiona Chizonga, Mr. and Mrs. My parents, Manyama. <laughs> 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 Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, good man. I'm How good, are you good, doing, man? man? I'm, I'm, not, I'm great. So, like, I first start knowing you, um, a fresh of the airport, you got a Zimbabwean flag. You could have shown that you're like you're an advocate for some other organization. You've got a quarter of a milli. The president is on speed dial, like, yo, my nigga, come. Uh, I need to highlight you. I need to give you some, some. <laughs> Feeds that Shango is your best. Like every man is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the diamond boy? What's going through your head when you touch that airport back from. You know, um, every time I relive that moment, it's. You can't. You can't describe it because it, it, it just seems like surreal. You know, when I, I remember on the flight back, you know, I was just trying to relax and then I was sitting next to some Bali. Nice Bali. Um, I think he, he he's in, into mining or something. You know, we're just sharing ideas and just talking. So it feels normal when you're thirty thousand feet in the air and you're just you know you're on a plane with another traveler. It's mm -hmm. normal. Then you land and you get off the plane and people say, "No, um, Mr. Chizonga, can you just wait?" And you're like, "Okay, it's starting." But you're like you still feel like okay, it's pretty normal. You know, um, they know who I am. I know who, who they are. It's okay. Maybe it might be a little bit special, whatever. And then you get off the plane and someone takes your passport and <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. Like they, they didn't they didn't tell me about my I was like, no, but my bags, hand luggage, someone took my hand luggage, they took my passport and said, No, don't worry, please come into this room. The airport has got these rooms, Baba. Thanks for my, my, my VIP compartments. My compartments. You thought you were smuggling drugs or something, you're like, maybe I do I have drugs on me or <laughs> I was like, what's going on? So they took me into that room and then they briefed me. Mm -hmm. And in that room I saw my mom. My dad and Adiona was there because mm -hmm. we saw each other before. And then the head of security came and said, look, we have a crisis. And I'm like, oh, what's going on now? It's like, no, we, we, we can't let you out the main entrance because it's a fire hazard. There's too many people here to see you. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I could hear people, the noise, singing. And I was like, what's going on? Right? And then the guy said, we'll have to sneak you out the back. And then he was like, because you have to go to the state house. And I was like, guys, what's going on? What do you mean? Which, which state house? It's like, the, the state house, state house. Like, you want to go, we're, going, we're taking you to go see the president. I was like, what do you mean? And my dad looked at me and he's like, ah, bro, I'm not even wearing a suit, bro. Oh, yeah, dad, I was he was not wearing a T-shirt. A, a T-shirt. Ah, he was touched. Yeah. He was like, let me go at least get a jacket. I don't know where he found a jacket. And he was angry the whole time, but you can't make me go and meet <laughs> the, in, pres the, uh, the president in a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, so, but that was the second time. The first time was normal. Everything was normal. And the first time I thought not, no one knew who I was. No one watched the show. And there was like a hundred people out there. And I remember um, my boy, boy, boy dancing. Was, dancing and doing the most. But I was like, what's going on? You know, so it, it's not something you can prepare for, man. It's mm -hmm. You, you, it's not normal, you know. It's crazy, right? It is crazy. It's crazy. Varuma wanda out there, the kutons want a visa to go Buddha for a few couple of hours. You don't need. So you gave this guy, you gave this guy a three month visa to be out there while. And what's going through your mind when like the guy's in the house and? Okay, so I think firstly she was whipped. Nah, man. You know what happened? It was strategy on our part because I remember initially. Uh, when Fumai was born, Munya didn't want to go the second time, but Lobola had already been shot. And Fumai was born severe prematurely. So he was born at 30 weeks. That's like seven and a half months. And he was 800 grams, like the size of this water bottle. He was really tiny. And the doctors were like 72 hours. Then we'll know whether he's going to live or die. So they gave him, the big brother people gave him 48 hours because he had already left, then they brought you back. But so like some guy, I don't know who was just lingering about. I just remember that. Um, um, then I had a dream. This is the weirdest thing. Remember, I had a dream 
the day before he left and we were all just thinking because you know it's do or die it was re- a really sensitive time for the whole family everyone was just nervous whether Fumai was going to make it um, I had a dream about him and he was so happy and he was just like my, my resort I had in like Bali or or whatever it was like clear blue waters and you like saw white soft, sands you, you, I saw the soft yeah. light and I, I woke up with this feeling I was like so, you need to do this I don't know what that dream was about but I had it two days in a row do you remember and I told him you need to do this just go and he left and that was it and what I did when I got home when I got discharged the baby obviously had to stay in in the hospital for another two and a half months I was distar- discharged on day nine so I would go home and then come back to the hospital in the morning. I went home and plugged the TVs in the whole house. And I didn't watch Big Brother for a single day. Serious? Yep. So let's 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 let, let, let's rewind back to like how how does Adiona and Munya meet? Like is it high school? <laughs> what, what was what's going on? How, how did you guys meet? I know I'm told, but shame. I can't. I don't think I can convey that story. No, 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 I think we can. We're adults. No, eh, baby. You know the thing is, this man could watch this and he could come back and stab me. I get. Right. Oh, but anyway, it was it was it wasn't like. It wasn't I wasn't like in a relationship. Let's just put you it. You were in a situation. No, I wasn't even in a situation. So she claims I was a rebound. So yes. can you explore that? I had a serious heartbreak and for kids out there, rebounds work. <laughs> <laughs> serious heartbreak. When I met Munya, I will be very honest. His father is the one who I met first before I met Munya. And I was in a group called African Voice. It's an all a cappella, all female wait, wait, wait. quintet. Like so, your father, your father did the just wow, just here. He used to call me Murora, 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 Murora. Serious? Yes, he would after after every show, he would make sure that I got home safe. You know, you're you're younger than all my boys. Do you know that? So I have to make sure that you're well taken care of. And then one day you'll meet my boys. They're very good looking. Blah blah blah. You said that. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> As you were. And then it was also the ladies in African voice because it was Prudence Katomeni, um Kundisai Mtero, uh Lilio Sakaina Mura Faith Mandipira. They were much, much older than I was. I think I was 18. Mm. And Iowa, you know, we have to find you the right husband. I actually we actually had our first date at one of the other ladies' house. Serious. <laughs> yeah. It was a bride, and we were the only two people invited. Yeah. I was like, this is awkward. And then there was no, but then you had your stalker. No, my oh stalker. Oh my gosh. She had so it was me, her, and then there was this other guy that she was dating. Um, but how did your dad well, so your dad drops you off and then goes and says, Yo, that one drag something some no, you know, no, it happened. It, I think I've not I've not some botuza like that. How it happened, the ladies would be like you know, Mr. Chizonga, you know, he's got this. And I remember, Kwaka Tanga Koya teacher, Munya's younger brother. And teacher had cornrows. And for some reason, you know, I was just not into cornrows. <laughs> so I just did. And then Munya came to Haifa. That was the first no, time no. I actually saw you. Uh-uh, it wasn't Haifa. Remember uh, Book Cafe? Oh, it was Book Cafe. So I think what my dad did was that he called me in for yeah. um, uh, th- uh, uh, a meeting with the ladies to discuss the show they were doing. And he just said, no, just come and sit in and just watch and meet the ladies and so So I think, I didn't realize that he had met you. And so he, that was probably his way of saying, no, come see. He didn't say it out loud. You know, Puti, you know, yeah, generation, yeah, yeah. you have a tower of Shiripache and it's, but in any way, he did it from day one. So he spoke it into existence. Into existence, existence yeah. Yeah. So fast forward, how does, how does, what, at what point do you then say, She's the one. I think I want to spend the. Re- I want to spend forever with this person. You know, I'll be honest with you, um, Alex. Uh, what happened was, so is it Alex or is no? No, it's Alex. Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did we killed the other guy. We killed him. Oh, yeah, he's he's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I'll be honest with you. It took me a long time to realize that she was the one. I don't believe in the concept of the one. What happened with us, and I can only speak from <clears throat> my perspective, was she was just there. 
and it sounds crazy, but she was my longest relationship one, and it, it, we just took it a day at a time. Every day I'd wake up and she was still there. Mm -hmm. So it just made sense to go to the next level. You know what I mean? Um, and I think what what then, but I think the push there was an, the impetus was there was a point where we weren't together, and I remember going for drinks with a friend of mine. Um, yeah, they are still a, a, a swimmer. Now we'll get into that, Dory. We'll get into that. Um, and this guy was like, Munya, can you imagine your sons? Or your, at the time, it was just one. Can you imagine your son calling another man dad? And that just hit me in places I didn't know existed. You guys had, uh, we had your first bond in. <clears throat> did. We yeah, we separated bond? when Fumai was 10 Two. months. 10 months. Was, yeah, mm -hmm. it was 10 months, yeah. Then we got back together like two months later this is after no. you, so what you got you, you're dating and then you got engaged and then you separated we didn't group. engage no we did we dated we engaged and then we broke up okay don't you remember the before? the, <laughs> the you, terrible engagement the worst engagement. Proposal, proposal on god's green earth how My drunk goodness. were you Yo. okay cool <laughs> we'll get to that part but uh so tell me tell me something like you then realize, well, I, I, I blew it. I blew it up and this person is the one, you know what I mean? You, like we all, we, I've, I've personally made mistakes like that as well in life where you're like, yo, but I could have had, uh, done it better. Mm -hmm. How does forgiveness, reconciliation, how does that process and that path, like how do you guys walk back to each other? Look, the, the, the honest truth is, is that, you know, when you've made a physical connection with someone, uh, it's familiar territory. Mm -hmm. So I think that helped. Uh, I don't know if you if you agree, uh, Kumrid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, definitely. You said it very uh, politically cool. correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the physical connection helped. So it was familiar. Right. So that would, you know, would still link up because of that. And then, so it wasn't like we, we stopped talking completely, you know. Um, so I think that was a place to build mm -hmm. A relationship from. Does the separation happen after you come out of the house or? Yes. After. after. The, what is it? The fame? Yeah. Brad Pitt. Oh, Brad Pitt. Oh, Brad Pitt. Oh, right. <laughs> so, so, like, so, 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 so tell me, like, um, you know, uh, being <clears throat> in, like, and I know it, 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 like, it probably had a strain on you guys. Like, how did that whole, you are now, you would never even look, uh, give you a second look at any given day. Now, how does fame then, his fame, how, do, how does that affect this relationship? How, how did you then fortify that? Um, I think speaking on my part, it was very difficult because I think after giving birth to our first child, you know, I was, you know, the young guys, I was a 10. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gained 20 kgs with our first child. Right. And obviously, looking at yourself in the mirror, you don't recognize yourself. I didn't feel like myself. I felt like I'd lost myself or a part of myself. And that transition from being just Adiona to now someone's mother. And then now you have... I felt very insecure. Let me, let me put it there. And when he started getting a lot of female attention and, you know, and they would look at you. And I even got nasty messages from women that would be like, e, Adiona, you know, your husband is a heartthrob. Why don't you lose some weight? Yeah, Serious. that happened. Wow, really? So I experienced that cyberbullying happened. before cyberbullying. I mean, before cyberbullying. <laughs> Who are these bitches? <laughs> Name and shame them. <laughs> what we are must you going to do know. now? Go but embarrass them. <laughs> obviously, you know, had I know, known what I know now, that I need to be comfortable in my own skin, and I have to own, you know, my body has just been through nah. the most. And it has done such a beautiful thing for me, giving me this beautiful yeah. toy. Um, I didn't know that. And it broke me. So I will admit that, you know, I my part in the breakup was I was not emotionally present in the relationship because I was extremely insecure. No, rightly, rightfully and so. I mean, you, I was you, yeah. depressed. I got into a depression yeah. and also taking care of one other premature guys. That's a story for another day. Okay? Like you, like you, you got this fear with, I might lose him anytime, every him. day. 
And wow. you just, the, um, I totally do get it. I it get was it. insane. And you, I felt like his life was in my hands. So I wouldn't get out of the house. You know, I wouldn't even want to. I'm, I love to look good. I wouldn't even look good because. Oh, but every day, we're going to have a timeline. Shah, Shah. A new selfie, new selfie, new selfie. And sometimes we'll be out together. And then, Titoro picture, Shah. Yeah, that's the worst, though. I think the, I think the Titoro picture is the, it has to be Just, the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. And, it's uh, the worst. And so, so now you guys get back together. Do you guys what do you do the white wedding one? Yeah, uh, we 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 did that. We did the white wedding. We did <laughs> the white wedding. Just sounds like uh, white walkers. Yeah, all right. And, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we did we did the whole the whole nine yards. But you know, just to go back to that, you know, postnatal depression is real. Right. Yeah, that's true. And, and I think <clears throat> you know when you when you're a man. Sometimes it's hard to, well, actually not sometimes, it's very difficult to notice it in your partner. Right. Because you're thinking, hey, bro, we've done this amazing thing, get back to normal, let's, mm. who's, where's my person, you know? Yeah. And I know a lot of people. Oh, that's second bone. Boss. Hey. <laughs> <You're ready. laughs> I know, right? Yeah, you're ready, good to go. Good to go, the workers are ready. It's a factory ready, you know? Um, <laughs> and I know a lot of couples, a lot of men who've, 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 who I've spoken to personally who've said, look, it's, She's not the same. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, but she's not, of course she's not, she's not the same. But not knowing that, at the time, I didn't know that it was postnatal depression, yeah. um, which is a big thing. No, 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 I, I totally get you. So you, you guys get married and um, you're now in this institution. You've got this beautiful uh, baby boy. How does the fight that you have had when you guys were engaged uh, influence how you treat each other, how you speak to each other, how you respect this institution and the family that you've built. Um, are you still Mchineka? Whatever. Like, how does that then? How does the first fight then uh, regularize, uh, regulate, regulate your um, your guys' fights when you're now married? How do you fight now when you're now married after? I mean, you guys are not, it's not like you guys are perfect. We all fight with no, our... No, I definitely... Others. So I want to know how, how you guys then got mm. to that part where... Wow. I think, you know, I think once we, 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 <clears throat> once we made that choice, things just started happening. I think, you know, you have a child, you, you have to try and build a life together. Mm. Um, so, I, look, I mean, I think it's public knowledge that I, I, I battled with alcoholism for a long time. And by the grace of God, I'm three and a half years sober now. At that time, I was still in active drinking and active using. And your maturity levels, they say that your maturity level freezes from the minute that you start drinking, if you have a problem with alcohol. So I was still 13, 14, emotionally, and in, in terms of maturity. So everything was sort of handled from that perspective where, you know, now, you know, yeah, yeah you still have these massive fights and these massive blowouts, because I was a kid. But... I felt like what saved us, well, what saved, from, if, if I can give my perspective, was um, we we're playing husband and wife, and we played it very well. You know what I mean? So we we're going through the motions and you know figuring it out, and but we had made this commitment. In fact, I won't lie to you. You know, full disclosure, I think it was getting to the point where getting to breaking point. Um, I think it was about, we were together for about four years, and then we heard that... Married for four years. Married for four years, yeah. and then we, and then she told me that she's expecting again. And we're, I think we just found our rhythm. Yeah. We just found where we are. And you're thinking, oh, we're back to that yeah. now again. And then that just, and when my dad said to me, he actually said to me, he's like, you know, Unendoro, the second child is always a nightmare, and always fucks everything up. So I All can't right. say that, on, on, but it messes everything up. Yeah. And I looked at him, I was like, I'm a second child. Oh, you're yeah, a second child. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm like, what is, are you trying to? Yeah. Am I, are you trying to say something? Are you? Okay, but then yeah. I, I, so I understood what he meant because you find your rhythm, you find your space, and then boom, surprise, surprise. So can I ask a question though? Like, just, uh, just like, just take it back. Like, you had the bag. Do you feel like by the time? That have yeah, you still have the bag, but I'm saying like bag. at that time, you know, you're exposed to this. Everyone, everyone wants you to be their brand ambassador. You know, everyone is just pledging. I don't know if everyone who pledged money to give you money gave you money that time, but what I'm saying is that like, are you, are you throwing? Do you think some, the one of the reasons for your uh, for your split was that you're trying to throw money at every problem that came your way and not trying to process it? I think. 
Yeah, that's deep. That's deep. I never, I've never thought of it like that. I, yeah. It's not necessarily... Yeah, I think... No, I, actually, let me rephrase it. Yes, I definitely was throwing money at a lot of problems. And I think, you know, when you're in that sort of space... The funny thing for me is that I never actually had trouble with floozies and other girls because right. I was so busy living and I had something to do. You know, right. I, I, look, I'm a filmmaker. I make films. That's what I do. And, you know, you create this. The funny the funny thing happens when you're that, um, when you have that, that level of fame is that people create a cocoon around you and you don't know about it. Like people... Make like the gatekeepers. Oh yeah, they yeah they like they, they like everyone with who, everyone who can say something that can build you is deemed a threat and mm -hmm. like yo why moving around with ten people you can only move you can move around with one yeah and they're like yo so you're trying to yeah okay cool. exactly yeah. and then and a lot of those people are hangers on but you don't know it at the time you know you think ah these these are people who believe in my vision they can drink like me they smoke like me they, you know what I mean and that cocoon sort of keeps you away from a lot well it kept me away from a lot of stuff and my relationship was part of that cocoon like right. where you know uh, yes i'm a married man but i'm pursuing this thing for my family and you know ga, 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 and I'm, let's work and you know um so you're not really dealing with munya and adiona in this situation you know and then you know all of a sudden it builds up a lot of insecurities as well and you know you Paranoia, you know, more money, more problems. It's so real, like, because you don't know who to trust. People change. When they know that you've got a lot of money, everyone in your life changes. You know, you start getting phone calls from Sekuros who you haven't spoken to in 10 years asking you for sheets. And, and like, these are men who, who raised you. And now, now you have to be the, you are the, you are, you are the, you are father in them now. I mean, and, you're, and I'm like, but I'm not a man. Do you know what I mean? I'm not ready to be a man. What, 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 what? What um You know what? I think we should <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Shouldn't we? Sips water. <laughs> Sips water. We, um the the president when he handed us over that envelope, yeah. what did he say? Do you remember? He said Munya Isususewa rume at Zutanimari. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to your wife. I was so upset. So he handed it to me. As soon as we left that place, Muya was like, oh, What belongs to Caesar? <laughs> give yeah, unto me. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I think he right like he explained before where he was when he received that money. And I, I think everything just hit him like a, a ton of bricks. Fame, money, influence, fatherhood. Fatherhood. Even being my husband, though we weren't married, but we're staying together. Uh, husbandhood, is there such a word? Come on. But he wasn't really prepared for it. Right. So I won't even judge him for what happened with that money or even like talk about it because it's irrelevant because of where he was. You know, like um, I remember having a conversation the other time I bumped into you somewhere. Yeah, me and you, how if we... We bump mm. each, each other somewhere you're not around. <laughs> and you know, like, <laughs> and then you're saying that, yo, <laughs> we were, you, you're, you're telling me about, like, you know, the change that you're seeing in him yeah. and, like, because uh, he's helped me also with my journey in, yeah. in, 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 in recovering. What are some of the, what's, 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 what, what's one of the worst things he's done under the influence of Johnny Walker? Keep oh working. Oh, <laughs> goodness. Where do I begin? Um, we don't want him cancelled, so... But no, so I'm not, don't don't I'm go. To, no, he's PG never kicked 13. any. He's never kicked any dogs, guys, or any cats. He, nothing like that. PG thirteen, I think. Or have I? Did did dramatic music? Anyway, I think. The engagement. Yeah, it was the engagement because as a like Nuzvaka, every young girl has. That was Johnny Walker. That was no no yes that was Gold wasn't label. it? Ooh, it was Christmas time. I will give you. I will give you uh, uh, <laughs> props now, for now putting I know it what together. This engagement. Yeah. Uh, oh, he actually organized the engagement. Alex, yeah. It was well planned. He took me to Mashingo, Lake Kyle. 
there's like a chapel, a 12-seater chapel right on top of the mountain. Beautiful where you're overlooking the water. He spent the whole day prepare you know, put candles everywhere, but he was also sipping. <laughs> so the whole day he was sipping. You still in RA the same. No, I was there and I got out under by ancient city and he was planning. It was perfect. Christmas time is my favorite time of the year. So he knew. So our planning was on point. Now delivery was just, uh, my God. Execution. <laughs> Execution was terrible. We get to the chapel at about seven at night. He is drunk out of his nut. We get there and then he asked the gentleman, guys, what denomination is this chapel? I can see the chapel with the candles. And already, oh my gosh, I was so excited. Fumai was in the car with me. And then the guys were like, no, it's it's multi-denomination, you know. In, anyone is is allowed in this. Then he looks at me with this stare. I've never seen that stare before and then he in my passes life. Out. And then he says, Adiona, I'm going to say this <laughs> because I can't say exactly what you said. These bleeps a Satanist. <laughs> and I just remember, you know, I just remember just going into shock. When I say Kuru Vaya Vaya, I was like, ah, no. I got to square at TSA 1. No, no, no. That's extreme, though. Yeah. So, that's, I think for me, that was... How's the drive back from Ashigo? Yeah. The whole time I was just saying, ah, oh, those guys are Satanists, baby. But I think <laughs> when I got sober, <laughs> when I sobered up, I think it was more embarrassment <laughs> because. I, <laughs> but did you guys? Did you at least pay them? Yeah, we paid them. We I think yeah. we we chucked like we <laughs> chucked money at them. Yeah, yeah go and worship the devil. Uh, 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 look, so I was I was a problem. So can I ask a question though? Have you like have you forgiven yourself as in oh. like um, as in everything that you experienced as an as, as an alki and if, and how how has been that journey? Yeah, no, I definitely have. I've forgiven myself. I've, you know, I've started making amends where possible. Um, the great thing about it is that it's it's one of those walks where I can spend the rest of my life making up for it because my the way I live my life now, I feel like is the biggest amends that I can make. But I have forgiven myself. Thank you for asking that because a lot of people forget that you hurt yourself as well. Um, I have, which is why I can talk about it now and laugh. I think it's hilarious. Um, and I don't, the funny thing is, I think the biggest gift that my sobriety has given me is that I don't regret going through that. Because I had a gasp. You know what I mean? Like, I've got like, a bitch. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure you witnessed yeah, some of the, yeah, the debauchery. Yeah. Like, I had, I had so much fun doing it. But uh, and unfortunately, there was this wake of destruction. And it wasn't always bad. You know, it was, there were some moments where it was, you know, there was real moments of high, you know. Um, and, you know, you... You, you you can't you can't replace them you know um, but yeah I know I have forgiven myself and you know it's it's a walk it's 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 a you know you heal once and then you live as a new human being as as, as parents though has I I should have my feeling Bambi play the kids yeah. yeah in fact the oldest in fact you know what there was a heartbreaking story and I think this is one of the times when I realized no I need to stop I think that was actually the day wasn't it. No, I think it was just after that, a couple of weeks after that. Yeah. But I remember coming home and just faceless drunk, faceless drunk. And where, well, like, you're, say, you're three, four, five year old, there's to parent you now, and you're thinking, what's, uh, it, what's this now? Dude, it got bad. Like, so I got into the house, right, into the lounge, and I took off all my clothes. For you're some, not. For some reason. In what hour was this? This must have been like. Seven, like, prime time. Three. No, this was. No, half four, yeah. half, half four to five. A.M. Mm -hmm. A.M. So the, 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 the maid is coming in at six, right? So I get home, I take off all my clothes, and then I pass out. So my son at the time was about two or three years old. No. No, he was, no, he was, no, I lie, he was, he was about five six. five, six. So the baby was asleep in, the, in his bedroom, and then uh, Fumai, the oldest, was about five, six. And he comes into the lounge, and he he covers me with a blanket, right? So I think the maid saw me and then Fumai covered me with a blanket and then he sat there watching his cartoons right next to my head. And then I, I came to and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then like, I'm like, Fumai, what are you doing? And he's like, no, daddy, I just had, I wanted to protect you. 
dude, you know, like when, you know, those, those, <laughs> you know those moments where it's <laughs> you like, went deep on you. Yeah, you yeah, went deep on that. me, bro. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, thanks, boy. Thanks, son. And then I walked out and I cried. And I realized, no, 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 you know what? This is, this is, you shouldn't have to see this. You know, and I'm sure he witnessed a lot, be- yeah. but without understanding yeah. what it was. Uh, th- by the time the second one was born, um, uh, no, I was still drinking, actually, because I only stopped drinking a couple years after that. I think two, after two years. Yeah. After DY, yeah. Two or three years after DY. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 2018, I think it was, yeah. And... Are you scared of that beast ever coming, that person ever coming back again? At this time, I don't even want to think about it. (laughs) I think, you know, because if you think about something or if you give it, what's the word? What's the English for that? If you give it enough power, it, it will materialize or manifest itself. So I don't even think about it. I'm just trying to enjoy this new phase so this new stage so during this whole time who are you talking to kuchamanaga munamaga dipo zakanya sokwana here does it need to be in a psych ward so who like your family and like is your family does the family know that 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 you're going through no you're going through this does his family know that you're going through yes i think i confided shame your parents i don't know how to be as well he's there he's there but he's now con i he doesn't have cornrows anymore. He doesn't anymore. have cornrows anymore. He's now a lawyer. Yeah. So, oh, serious. Ah, congrats, man. <laughs> yeah. So I think I conf- and confided a lot in my in-laws. And it helped actually with our relationship because now I don't see them as in-laws. I see them as mom and dad because every single thing, Channing, I eat a bite of I'm going to call and I'm going to tell them whether I want, I just want to call his mom and just cry. And she can't even hear what I'm saying. Cause I'm just so emotional. She would listen. She would give me sound advice. She would tell me, okay, do this, do that. And uh, understandably so, because they've known him from when he was young. So it actually strengthened our relationship as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys being in the creative industry and you know, like we always work crazy hours and whatever. So you're going on a show who's babysitting and how how does that dynamic work? How does your guys' family dynamic work? <laughs> like, you know, or you are got a because you're always traveling. This one time you're in Cape Town, you're in Devon, India. you're planting banjo somewhere, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, then banjo is caused a stir. Like, um, like how's a how's how's a parenting dynamic and like how do you guys keep this whole thing together? No, I think I think you know one thing that we're very adamant about is that at home we're mom and dad and we're just people. So um, it's something that we, we 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 sort of we take in stride because you know we both know what the other does. But something interesting is happening, Alex, actually, and that's that her career is now soaring in the sense that you know she's now. When we go to functions, I'm now uh, Mr. Diona. Do you actually have a picture of mine? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, oh my goodness, we see you on DSTV. Oh, we love your show. We love this. We love your music. And for me, I mean, I haven't made a film in, in, in a yeah. long time. And, um, Since Gocha and I will go, right? Yeah. <laughs> you watched that, right? <laughs> Since what? <laughs> well, the last one was at, uh, The Gentleman. No, no, the no, last one was... Well, that's what, the last one you starred in, right? No, the last one was Tete B. Yes, Chetabi was after escape. Was after escape. Chetabi's on the Anatok Villa. Yes. Oh, yeah. That one. Great and film. And then there's, um, there's another one, but it never saw the light of day. And I, look, it gave me an opportunity to focus on, on other things. Um, but her career is in high gear. So it's, it's a weird dynamic because now she has to do those the odd hours. And the, you know, so it's, it took, it take, it's taken some getting used to. Um, because I never envisaged that side of her. Uh, do you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I, maybe it was arrogance. I don't know. I just never thought of it. You know. Um, I guess you'd be so focused on your, excuse me, on your creative journey that you don't see that someone else is also on theirs. You know what I mean? I always ask couples that come to the show that like yo, um, you know, the the reason one of the major reasons for like the divorce rate in this country is because of like uh, finances and stuff. And then you know since. Uh, the president gave you the f- envelope and then you demanded the envelope. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. How are you guys dealing with finances now? Uh, you know, how was it buying your guys' first property? We know you're multiple property owners in this wonderful sunshine city <laughs> of ours. <laughs> how, how, how do you guys uh, deal with finances? Um, I think... Multiple means one, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> times. Oh, times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I think it's a, it's a good balance. How, how we normally plan day by day. We don't normally plan unless if it's holidays or whatever it is. But to not do it as way because you know you also stay in, in Zimbabwe. Sha anything can change. All right. So we try not to stress ourselves by over planning and we just do day by day by day by day financially. What's what's your guy's parenting style? Yeah, he's the bad guy, I'm the good guy. Enough said. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you like you guys, you guys, you guys are gonna be like uh, teenage three... teenage parents, right? Soon, right? Shh. Yeah, we've got three yeah. boys. Fumai yeah. is going to be thirteen yeah. next, next month, month. Da, da, da. and then Ny is gonna be. Eight. Why do you look traumatized? She's you know just thirteen. You're yeah. almost thirteen. Yeah, but I just realized that just now he's going to be terrorizing the city. All right, and you know what I mean. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm, I'm as terrified as I am excited, but he's a good kid. How do you discipline yeah. them? Uh, old school, Baba. Okay. You know, old school. Um, spare the rod, spoil the child. We don't... I, I can't do it. Huh? I can't do it. Every time I look at my sons, except for the little one. Yeah, I'm scans. What do you mean? The three-year-old. Papa Navangubes, I think he's the only one. I told us what's your Baba. Anointing, you flow. Explain to him. Tell him what you were like when you were pregnant with him and what you did to those poor people at our perfect wedding. <laughs> Tell them, Please. You guys did the perfect wedding thing. thing. She was pregnant with the third, the last born when they were shooting our perfect wedding. Yeah. And so for our perfect wedding, tyrant. I was a tyrant. But <laughs> she she refused to eat their food on set. People would come and pick her up and drop her off at her doorstep. <laughs> she was, she refused that, outfits. She got a new design. I was like, the makeup artist, didn't that little girl cry? Her they were just was, scared. You know what it is when I you're she pregnant. She was a makeup artist. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry if you're wow. watching this i am so so sorry i was not myself when i was pregnant and i've got no idea where it would come from because it will just like no it's like it will come up it will come up it will come up and then i'll just lash out that's who i was but obviously when i was in front of the camera i was very composed i was all right and after i gave birth now it all made sense. All right. And we gave him a nickname when he was born, Takatom mm. Timukauru, because from the second he was born, he would not stop crying. Seriously. It's, it's his totem as well. Yeah. Elephant. But he would go. He would scream the whole night. I told Torama turns in Inamuya to walk up up and down the passage. I had a C section, so he did most of the walking. I, I, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, on. So just that just. But you would only explain. sleep with the. I had this shoulder technique where. You, you put, put the guy, his stomach, like just at a, at a degrees angle. Yeah. At a degrees angle. <laughs> and you walk, and you hold it like that, and you walk, and then the owner would fall asleep. And if you just move, he exactly. wakes up and he screams. Because uh, he had colic. Yeah. I, I love the way you guys, like, named, named your, like, your kids and the way you talk about it. Like, how important is, um, how important is it for you guys to teach your, um, kids your african heritage like as in where you guys mm. come from and whatever how how important is that in your guys life because and sometimes and sometimes i'm or joy or whatever you know you guys are like the all this shown and names yeah, and i find yeah. it very beautiful how mm. how important is is it for parents to like um instill and teach their kids about their roots and where they come from identity I think it, it's very, very important. And it's, it's um, I think the challenge that we have, we're actually talking about this, is the challenge that we have is the identity of Zimbabweans. Right now, we're fighting to find out who we are. And we're not embracing certain things. We're discarding certain things. We're very prejudiced towards certain things. But we're also very, and we're, we're an extremely cosmopolitan culture, you know, in this country. You know, there's so many influences from all over the world. But it is very, very important for you to know who you are. And I remember um, when I was growing up, my mo <laughs> so my parents' name names are Margaret and Edwin. Oh, okay. It doesn't get more British than that, you know. And I remember my mom, 
Because I remember there was a time I was like, no, but mama, why didn't you call me like, because my names are so long and they're so hard to pronounce. Why didn't you call me David? And then she sat me down and she explained. She said, we made a conscious decision because we were going to give our children African names because mm. you're not a Kevin. You're Munyarad's, you know, with names with meaning. So when our kids were born, it was the same principle. Um, you know, Fumai, Liwai, Yanai, you know. Um, but the second names, etc. cetera, uh, you know, we had to, we gave them to their uncles. Yeah. And, Yanai Anunzi, Yanai Avery, Vincenzo. All right. And I'm like, but guys, what, you know, you're breaking <laughs> They're the... They're beautiful names, though. They're beautiful names, but it's like, but you're breaking the African thing. But it, it is, it is a big thing. And I think what we're struggling with is uh, the language. All right. Shona and they have the same problem that I had when I was growing up, that I grew up in a very English environment. Okay. You speak English at home, you go to school and you speak English, it's a predominantly um, British-influenced school. You know, so there's no, there was very little room. I didn't speak Shona to anyone, unless, you know, Patenda, Musha, or whatever. But how often would that happen? So we're, we're trying. We're, we want to push that as well. You guys have been together for, if my calculation said more 20 years, how long? Since 18. 16 this year, then married 11. Uh, any word of advice to a young couple like himself? This guy is an aspiring <laughs> getting married guy. <laughs> <laughs> we had about attachment. Oh, nice. Oh, well done, like, guys. What advice would you give to a young couple out there? Like, and, you know. Whew, advice that I would give a new couple is it's not as rosy as it, as it advertised right no not even that ah you know what don't take anyone's advice that's the advice that i would give you because i don't know what your man's like and you don't know what my man's like so i can't come into your home telling you do this do that change that try this because what works for me might not work for you so i think sit down with your partner the best advice you can get for what your person wants or vice versa is to speak communication so what do you want Munya? and then he asks what do I, what do you want adiona then we talk about it and make it work two things Number one, invest in your marriage and in your relationship with your partner. Mm. It's like a business. The more money you put in, the more money you're likely to get out. Same thing with the relationship. The more you put in, the more you get out. So those days when you want to go and party with your boys instead of spending time with your family, invest in your person. Right? The second thing is have lots and lots of sex. Mm -hmm. Sex is one way of communicating. And it Evidently, is, on it kid is, number four, but okay, we'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> I will, we are no, ahead. That is not <laughs> happening, by the way. But he said it, Ka. No, so what? It, but it's... <laughs> you don't know the rules of this show. It is law if Alex says so. All right. No, but yeah, but lots and lots Just of sex. Kidding. Because it, 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 that intimacy keeps you together. All right. And it brings you back to what's important. Um, and it's a way of communicating when words don't work. And look, if... It will sustain you for the first for the first couple of years, at least until you get older, and in between that, you'll figure out your differences if you have any. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so just those two things: investment and sex. Um, just uh, as well, pardon. What are you working on? What are you working on? Anything that our viewers out there need to know? What are you working on currently? Oh, where do I, I begin? I'm joking. Um, so right now I'm doing a show with Zetian right. called Shoe On. Okay. Um, absolutely love that show. It's okay. you know we're going to our third season yeah. now, and I also started running Finn Bath. It's a health and beauty clinic that my mother-in-law handed over to me at the beginning of the year. It's a new baby to me, but I'm very excited. So next time when you want a massage, give me a call. Um, then the third thing is I've got a foundation called the Ramai Foundation. And I partnered with the Zimbabwe National Family Planning Council. We do something called the Pad Bank Campaign. So what the Pad Bank Campaign does is we raise sanitary products, so sanitary way for girls, girls in marginalized communities that don't have access to, to that. And they just come. ZNFPC has 26 youth centers across Zimbabwe. So we'll they can just that. go and get pads from, from there. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Munya, what are you working on besides going banjo?
Yeah, the, the cannabis thing is, is really caused a lot of a, a big stir. Um, I think people need to talk about it without giggling. There's no one who can, when you, you do cannabis. <laughs> um, but I mean, apart from that, I, uh, so I, I recently came back from India and I signed an MOU with the cinema exhibition and distribution company. And our mandate is to set up, to establish 50 screens, uh, 50 cinema locations in Zimbabwe and 1,000 across Africa. So that's what I'm busy with now. I'm really excited about that. It's called Picture Time. We've also secured refinancing for that project to the tune of $10 million. So we're actually looking for franchisees, people who can then run the cinemas. I mean, 50 is a good GD6, 50 per 10 million. I put on just 50,000 then I'm good. Is GTC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you man. You know, so that's what I'm working on. Very excited about that. Um I feel like I I I took a hiatus from the film industry for a bit. Um but I'm back now and I think I've found my calling and that's distribution. Cinemas I've been looking for the solution for years trying to figure out how do we solve the issue of distribution and exhibition in Zimbabwe. Now I got it. It's called Picture Time, um, Picture Time Africa, actually. So, yeah, look, you'll be hearing more about it, plus your GD6. Thank you, man. Guys, that's been another exciting, interesting episode from of the Bold Exchange. All that other nonsense type of content you're watching that's not quality, that's not <laughs> HD. Guys, this is the show. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Thank you, guys.